Hello, welcome back. Matt here. I have a question for you guys. What would be your number one camera ever made that can produce photos better or different slash more creative than any other camera you know of? So when I'm looking for kind of a holy grail camera, I'm trying to create images that other people can't create as easily. So ideally looking different to an iPhone photo. So when I was going through buying many of my cameras, I was always searching for that holy grail camera that people probably always lust after. I guess the holy grail camera can be different to different people. If you're looking for perhaps the best over-engineered camera ever made, you may like something such as the Leica M3, which I'm a massive fan of, as I've said before. But what if you want to create photos that other people can't create? And I guess the obvious answers would be Use a camera that's got a really fast lens, so you've got really shallow or special bokeh depth of field. Option one, perhaps. Option two, you could shoot large format, because a lot of people can't shoot large format because they either haven't got the equipment or they haven't got the know-how. So those, I guess, would be two options. One problem I had early on in my photography is I didn't have any large format kit, but I love the idea of tilting the plane of focus to give you kind of selective focus. I was one of those guys that loved the free lensing, if you've ever heard of that, I'm sure you have. I wrote a review for one of the UK photography magazines, which then seemed to be printed every year for the next 10 years afterwards. Free lensing is holding a lens from a different camera in front of your lens without it being attached tilting it and then by tilting the lens you can change the plane of focus on your final image. That was my photography style with a Nikon camera before going into Leica. Also played with lens baby lenses and things like that. I'm sure lots of you have tried this when trying to get creative with your photography and kind of feeling that you're in a rut. So with all that said I wanted to find a camera that could give me something different. And I love the idea of a Hasselblad. So I'm sure most of you know what a Hasselblad is. This is a Hasselblad 501C. And I've done a review on this already. I love the Hasselblad. I love the build quality. I love the sharpness of the optics. But it does have some flaws. Now I know many of you on YouTube are Mamiya RZ fans. The main difference between, well one of the main differences between a Hasselblad and a Mamiya RZ. I didn't bring it down, it's upstairs. But I've done a video on that already. Mamiya cameras are bellows focusing, meaning you can get really close to your subject with your lens. Whereas Hasselblad's a standard kind of helicoid lens focusing, meaning you cannot get very close. This lens, for example, focuses to 0.9 meters, which really isn't very close at all. So where am I going with all this? Wouldn't it be amazing if you could have a 6x6 format high resolution camera that focuses closer and will give you an option to tilt your lenses? I know what you're thinking, you're like, yeah, nice one, you're a dreamer, like, dream on, get a Hasselblad, shut up and enjoy what you've got. Uh -huh. No, I have a really special camera for you today and, and by the end of the video you'll understand why you've not seen it sooner, but I have had this camera since 2015, 2014, 2015, so quite a long time. Are you ready? I'm pretty sure most of you will not know this camera and if you do know this camera, let me know in the comments below. I'm excited. This is one of the most beautiful, most capable cameras ever made, in my opinion. Again, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, if this is one of those holy grail cameras. Are you ready? I need some kind of dramatic music. Okay, question. Does anybody know what this is? Obviously it's a roller flex, but it's not a roller flex that most of you know of because it's not a TLR. You can see from the lens on the front that this is a SLR style camera, similar to a Hasselblad. What about if I turn it to the side? This is a Rolleiflex SL66E. In my mind, this is one of the best cameras ever made. So let me tell you a bit about this camera. The Rolleiflex SL66E followed the Rolleiflex SL66. The Rolleiflex SL66 was released in 1966, as the name suggests, but it's also 6x6 format, so the name kind of works both ways. The SL66 was reasonably similar to this, but it didn't have a light meter or kind of TTL metering. And then in 1982, they released the SL66E, which is the model I have. Do you want a quick side by side? Which one's heavier? <laughs> As my arms give way, the Rolleiflex is heavier. 
I've cooked, this is my kind of go-to setup on my Hasselblad and I tend to use the prism finder that adds a bit of weight to the camera with the prism finder attached a Hasselblad is roughly the same weight as a Rolleiflex that being 1940 grams so nearly two kilos which is around 68.4 ounces so I think it, normally a Hasselblad weighs around one and a half kilos and for kind of completeness I think a RZ Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 which I've got, I think that weighs around 2.4, 2.5 kilos. I do mention it in the in the Mamiya video. But so you've got the heaviest RZ, then you've got the roller flex in the middle, and then you've got the Hasselblad, which is lighter. But as I say, with this setup, they're more or less the same. As you just saw there, the roller flex is quite a chunky, kind of very solid camera. <laughs> you could certainly use it as a weapon. It, it's just absolutely solid and quite heavy in the hands. Um, for those of you that didn't realise, this is a waist level viewfinder camera like the Hasplads and the RZ and so with the same kind of same viewing screen and then your pop-up magnifier like so as I say one difference between the Rolleiflex and the Hasplad is the Rolleiflex has TTL metering through the lens whereas my Hasplad doesn't okay so you like amazing pretty camera so what so why is this camera so good well firstly the Rolleiflex HFT 80mm planar lens to my eyes it is comparable with the Hasbad planar lens at least as sharp obviously Hasbad lenses are really sharp if you've never used the Hasbad this is also equally sharp the problem with the Hasbad is you can't get very close and the problem with nearly every camera ever made is your planar focus is flat to the front of your your lens meaning everything that's on the same plane the same line as your front of your lens will be in focus. The advantage of large format cameras is you can tilt your plane of focus, meaning you can decide where you want sharp, where you want soft, where you want a greater depth of field, and where you want an even greater shallow depth of field, if that makes sense. So you can create more bokeh than you can normally create with the same lens at the same aperture by tilting your, your plane of focus. You'll see some example photos in a minute, so bear with me and it'll make sense. So why is this camera so special? There's a few points, so let's go through them. We've said the lens is amazing, so tick box, very nice. The Roll Effects SL66 is also bellows focusing, like a Mamiya RZ67. What's so special about bellows focusing? The advantage of bellows focusing is you can get much, much closer to your subject. Do you want to see how close I can get to you guys? Right, let's give this some perspective. First, I'll set the Hasblad to closest focus. I'm gonna to have to get up, I think. <laughs> 0.9 meters. So roughly there, you're in focus. Focusing on the, the front of the video camera. Okay, remember that. That's as close as I can get with my Hasblad without using uh, extension tubes to let me get closer. So when it comes to portraits, it's a bit of a pain in the backside because you have to put a extension tube or you say the macro lens to let you get closer for portraits. Okay, that's Hasselblad. Now, are you ready? This is where I'll pop out of your laptop screen. Right, I'm going to have to stand up. Okay, I can focus that close. <laughs> so I'm about that far from your face. <laughs> Well, the, the camera. <laughs> uh, did you see the difference? So the house barrel is what, what, roughly here. And with this camera, I'm roughly here. With no special equipment, straight out the box, as they say, it can do this without doing anything to the camera. So amazing tick box. So let's keep track. Number one, amazing lens. That's a given. You can get lots of nice lenses, whether they're made by Hasbad or Leica or whoever. Number two, you can focus really close. That's better than all my Leica M lenses because none of those focus close. Same with the Hasbad, as just mentioned. Which order shall I do in? Number three, you can reverse mount every Rolleiflex SL66 lens. Literally take it out, turn it around, put it back in, and make every lens into a macro lens. Genius! <laughs> I'm sure some of you equal level or better than me camera geeks will come back to me in the comments and say yes you can do this with this camera this camera this camera but 
there's not many. I, none of the cameras I own, and I own a few, none of them have the ability to take the lens off without any adapters, nothing. Flip it round, screw it in, and then focus as close as I think it's, I think it's about five centimeters, it's something ridiculous. I've not shot macro with it, so I've never tried it, but I absolutely love the idea because the, the plan was to use it for wedding detail shots, like ring shots. So I could use the same camera, the same lens, the same full setup, shoot the bride and groom at normal distance, flip the lens, go in, shoot the ring on the hand, all with the same kit. It's like, it's just the ultimate camera, surely. It's gotta be, isn't it? And that's not even the best of it. Are you ready? Number four, the absolute winner and the reason that I love this camera so much, this camera can tilt any lens. Hopefully it's focusing. How's best to do it? Is that better? Right, can you see there it says zero at the moment? So you can go plus eight or minus eight degrees. So are you ready? Okay, I need two hands to do this. Give me one second. So all I'm doing is I'm pushing the lens up. <laughs> and now we have an eight degrees tilt pointing up. And then you can do exactly the same. Excuse me while I change it again. It needs a bit of force. Or you can have eight degrees down. So that's full movement, either up or down. And you're like, what is the point of that? That makes no sense whatsoever. The point is now, if you have a square photo, six by six, as it's six by six format, there's your film back, same as a Hasselblad. By tilting the lens, I can have, say, a greater shallow depth of field at the top and a more shallow depth of field at the bottom. And then I'll put the line of focus, which is now deeper across say, the eyes. So I can, could shoot my portraits at 2.8 and have really sharp kind of eyes or face or whatever I'm focusing on and then have really shallow out of focus background above and below the model or to the left to the right for example so I might have shot it so on its side and had blur sharp blur or I could have blur sharp blur by tilting the lens you can decide how much blur and kind of how big or how little the line you want uh, if you shot large format, it's exactly the same way, but I know many people have not had the opportunity to shoot large format. So this brings large format to the to the masses, so to speak. I didn't shoot large format until after having this camera. So this gave me the real taste for large format. And it also gave me kind of an entry point to do what I wanted to do with large format before getting large format, if that makes sense. So this camera, sharp lens, close focus ability, macro ability and tilt lens ability, all straight out of the box with no extra equipment. To me, that's pretty special. Whereas to you, it might just sound like a lot of noise. What's he going on about in this video? All will come clear when I get to the photo. So bear with me, they are coming and then I'll talk you through them. Because the SL66E is not that common a camera, I won't go through every single button and every single dial because I'm sure most people don't care. The basic features, I guess, you have your shutter release here, which is threaded for cable releases. It's a bit weird because it sticks out at an angle. Unlike, say, the Hasbad 500CM, which has a leaf shutter lens and the Mamiya RZ lenses, they're leaf shutter lenses as well. This is a focal plane shutter meaning the same as you get in say a Leica, so just a normal curtain at the back and a standard lens. The advantage of a focal plane shutter, similar to the Hasblad F series, is you can have a faster maximum shutter speed. I don't know if you can see that. It goes from bulb all the way around to a thousandth of a second, whereas the maximum sync speed on a Hasblad is 1 over 500. The downside of a focal plane shutter is it'll only sync with flash at 1 30th of a second. So this isn't really a strobist camera. But there is a but. You can get lenses called LS lenses, which are leaf shutter lenses, which will then let you sync with your flash at a much higher flash sync speed. I guess a camera that has a similar setup is the Mamiya M645 Super that I also have. That has some lenses available, which are leaf shutter lenses. I use a 70mm f2.8 lens, I believe it is, a leaf shutter lens on a Mamiya 645 camera to let me sync flash at I think it's up to 250, 250th or 500th of a second. It's high. It's, it's better than the 1 over 30th, which is the standard. So 
the leaf shutter lenses are available for this camera the same as for the Mamiya 645. I know the Mamiya 645 is much more common so if you're a Mamiya shooter yes you can get leaf shutter lenses for your camera if you weren't aware. If you are shooting flash you have a hot shoe on the side and a PC sync port here and then this is your focusing knob that we saw earlier on in the video. I guess that's most of the basics of what the camera is. You have a film back obviously on the back of the camera and it detaches the same as a Hasblad. So that bit backwards is a film magazine. Here you go, it shows you on this side. It is slightly different to Hasblad because on a Hasblad the whole back comes off. On a SL66E, this part of the camera obviously stays in, intact, stays attached to the camera because there's no line as you can see. And then the rest of the back comes off. Now this is the point in the video before I get to the photos that I really hope a expert Pro Rollerflex SL66 user has accidentally found the way to this video because the reason you've never heard of me mention this camera which was my favorite camera when I bought it in 2015 is it doesn't work. These cameras are so kind of over engineered and kind of too smart for their own good almost. There's lots of features that stop you doing things by accident but the downside to that is the camera can jam quite easily. So when I first bought the camera, I had overlap issues. I'll bring up a few photos of a model called uh, Nella. These are shot in 2015 with the original film back. The film back was giving me overlap issues, but I enjoyed the camera so much. I then bought a second film back on eBay. Now here are some photos shot in London with Katie and Gina. And as you can see, this is why I love this camera. Look at the shallow depth of field and the bokeh I created just from a really simple scene. All it is is Katie standing against the wall with some lights in the background. Tell me one camera that can make that standard a scene look as creative as that without the need of Photoshop. To my mind, it's only really four by five cameras that can give you that amount of creativity in camera to create something that's kind of so unique in camera, if that makes sense. That's why I really like this camera. I could create things that seemed impossible to create before taking the photo. Here a photo shot outside with Gina. And as you can see, I'm using a slice of focus across the image and then playing around with the very shallow depth of field. I think this look is very much a love or hate look. I'm sure some people hate it and some people might like it. Personally, I really like the, the kind of the tilt look and the ability to place the focus where I'd like to place the focus and the ability to make shallow depth of field even greater, making bokeh even more amazing. So as you can see, the second film out worked, so I was like, amazing. I have the ultimate camera, very happy. This was before I bought Hasblads. Um, I started off with the Kiev 88, which I still need to do a video on. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see that video. I do need to do that, and I still need to do the Fuji GF670, which I keep promising. I need to find it, I've kind of misplaced it. So I had this before the Hasblad, and to my mind, I then no longer needed a Hasblad because it did everything the Hasblad could do and more. <laughs> so I was really happy. Then the second film back stopped working. And so then neither of the film backs were working. And the problem I've got is I can't even do anything with the camera now. It's totally jammed up. I can't fire it or anything. It is five years. What year are we now? 2021. Six years since I've used this camera. I got it repaired once. It worked for maybe those Katie Gina photos, I think that was when I had it repaired. And then it jammed up again and I've never been able to use it since. So if you know how to unjam these cameras, please, please write to me and tell me how to fix this camera. All I know is the, there's some problem with the, the film backs jamming so that you can't advance the film and you can't take the back off. So it's kind of a catch-22. You can't do anything, basically. It's jammed. You can't take it off. So this film has been in, in the camera since, as I say, since that time. It's on the first frame. So it's, it might be some kind of super vintage film. Uh, it's probably a discontinued. It'd be something like, it might be Fuji A-Cross original, Fuji Provia 400H, which is now also discontinued. Rare film in this camera, if anybody can help me mend it reasonably rare. So the reason I don't blab on about this camera on Instagram every week and on Facebook is because it is amazing if it would work. To my mind, this is the best camera ever made that doesn't work. And I think that's really sad. Uh, 
once I couldn't use this camera, I kind of gave up on the on the project, so to speak. Bought a Hasblad, and that's been super reliable. And you do get what you pay for with a Hasblad. These cameras are probably more than a Hasblad. Um, I'll get to price in a second. This camera, I think, is at least as expensive as Hasblad. But at the time, I think a Hasblad used to be more expensive. You do get what you pay for with a Hasblad. Hasblads are built like Leicas. And by that, I mean they're built to last and they're beautifully made and they do an amazing job at what they do. If it would focus closer and it could tilt, it would be the, the ultimate camera. But the fact that it just works is enough for me for it to be one of my favorite medium format cameras, kind of no question. And for my eyes, it gives some of the sharpest images of my medium format cameras. Fuji GF670 still to come. <laughs> But no, it is amazing and it works, which is why I use the Hasblads and I don't use the, the roller flex. I then missed the ability to tilt, so I then bought large format cameras. I've got three 4x5 cameras, which if you subscribe or stay with me long enough this year, once we're out of lockdown and we're allowed to venture more than two meters from your house, a slight exaggeration, you've got to stay within five miles of your house if you live in the UK currently in lockdown so you basically can't do anything. Once I can get out and see things more interesting than my local area I'll try and put some 4x5 videos together. Those give me the ability to tilt my images and that kind of ticks my box or what, what's the word scratches my itch and keeps me happy for that style of photography and then for when I'm happy with standard everything in focus plain to focus I'll shoot my Leicas for 35mm cameras you've seen on the on YouTube already and the medium format cameras I've already reviewed but especially the Hasblad is uh, particularly nice. How much does this camera cost you ask? Assuming the camera is working these cameras cost around £1,300 in the UK as at February 2021 when looking at eBay I can put a link below. I'm not sure if there's any listed in the UK but within Europe and worldwide there are a few listed. If you're based in the US they seem to cost them around $1,700 to $2,000. There is some crazy person in Spain for selling them for about six or seven thousand dollars. Maybe they work. <laughs> if this is worth 2k and it doesn't work, I need to get on eBay. Uh, but no, seriously, if anybody knows how to fix the, the jamming up Rolly flexes, it'd be so amazing to start shooting this camera again. Okay, so I tried to keep this channel with some surprises. In the last video, we had the super cheap 35 RC Olympus. Now we have a reasonably rare super duper special Rollerflex SL66E. If you enjoyed this video for entertainment purposes or factual purposes or any other purposes just to laugh at me, <laughs> I really appreciate it if you just take a second to hit that like button. It really does help me out more than you may think. As I say, if you have any knowledge on the SL66E, feel free to let me know in the comments. To give you kind of some idea of how little is on the internet about this camera, I googled Rollerflex SL66E before making this video to try to get some of the finer details to share with you guys. First on a Google, Mr. Leica review Rollerflex SL66E, I think it's 2014, blog post. I'll share that blog post below as I try to do with all my videos. I always forget to tell you, all my videos, if you want to see high res images of what I share in the video, Look in the description below, there's loads of information. You have links to eBay so you can check the latest price of these kind of classic cameras. You have a blog link, you have mentioned video links. Anything that I can think is useful, I'll normally try and put it in the description below. The only caveat is if I've not yet done a written review on that camera, there won't be a write up. <laughs> but many of the cameras I'm reviewing, I've already done write ups years ago. So, so I'm trying to basically go through my back catalogue and create videos for all the blog posts I've already written. That's all I've got for you today. The very beautiful Rollerflex SL66E. Big thanks to my patrons as always and see you back here in a few days. Bye.